Heavenly Father. Data mi zongi. We are here because of you. Tuli hano kubera wowe. We are privileged to be your children. Doha wa mahirwe yo kuba abana ba. And so we stand in your presence to honor you. Letsa duhagaze mu kubaho kwawe tukubashe. And to give you praise. Kutoguha mashimwe. Father this evening we choose to hear your word. Datu imugoro baduhishema kumvishina rya kumvishango ryawe. In the beginning was the word. Mwitangiro hari hu jambo. And today is the word. Letsa no yumunsi ni jambo. And your word will live forever. Ijambo rya rizahora iteka ryose. Let's give you a shout of praise because you are worthy. Yomana wa ikomera mashimwe shicha. In Jesus name. Isina rya Yesu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may take your seats. God Sobara bless you. Charira. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm privileged to be the speaker. Today. And most likely I'm going to be teaching for a long time. Because we are starting a teaching series about Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are here not because of any other person but because of Jesus Christ. To those of you who are joining us tonight for the first time. Maybe those who are following us on social media platforms. We are in a year with a big theme. Moving from seasons to your season. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We understand that it's only God who can pick you from those seasons. And take you to another level. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This month of February, we are going to be talking about Jesus Christ. We are going to focus on moving from a season of not understanding Jesus Christ to a season of understanding who Jesus is. Because when you understand Jesus Christ, your life will be different. You will be completely transformed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You seem not to be happy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, as we talk about Jesus Christ, I just want to request you something. If there is any message you should never miss, it is a message that is about Jesus Christ. Because many believers, for sure, they go to church, they even read the Bible, but they are always confused about Jesus Christ. And they don't understand the importance of of the Holy Ghost. They don't understand who God is. The Father. And then when it comes to Jesus Christ. It's a great confusion. But this month of February. We, we, we are going to have the same understanding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So today we will be talking about Jesus Christ and He's manifested, he manifested in the Old Testament. And Jesus has, people think Jesus has two names. The first name is Jesus. And the second name is Christ. That is not true. Jesus has one name. But the name Christ is what he does. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The name Christ is his responsibility. We are going to understand this more. In the Old Testament, there used to be only three offices or major responsibilities. We are going to come to that. And once we understand those three responsibilities, they are going to help us understand who Christ is. But for now, let's go to the book of John, chapter number one. It is going to be one verse, so I'm going to read in English, and then he'll translate from there. The book of John, chapter number 1, verse 41. 
The Bible says he first found his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated as Christ. So Christ, Christ is mentioned in the Old Testament under the title of Messiah. So, whenever you hear Messiah in the Old Testament, it is referring to Christ. And when you come to the New Testament, the name of Christ is mentioned over 500 times because of its significance. Because when you talk about Jesus Christ or when you talk about Christ only, you are talking about what he does. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the name of Messiah, which means Christ, it is also believed to be called the anointed one. So in Hebrew, you would call Jesus the Messiah which means Christ today which is translated to as the anointed one so when you see Christ he is the Messiah but he is also the anointed one hallelujah in the Holy Testament right from the book of Genesis up to the end of the of the Old Testament there is an anticipation of somebody who is going to come everyone in the Old Testament was expecting somebody to come as a Messiah whenever a big prophet would rise up some people would think maybe the Messiah has come but that was not the right time for him to come because the Messiah also means hope so generations and generations the Old Testament it was referring to the Messiah that is going to come and that Messiah is Christ. And the Bible says, the Old Testament says, that Messiah would come from the lineage of King David. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then 70 years after the death of Jesus Christ, I'm going ahead. 70 years after the death of Jesus Christ, there was a king called Titus. He destroyed the temple in Jerusalem. And in that Jerusalem temple, every Jew had a lineage there. Whenever you would want to know your relatives, you would go to that temple and you would see the family you belong to. But when King Titus destroyed that temple, the lineage of all Jews was taken away. That is why today most of the Jews don't know their grand grand grandparents. But there is only one family whose records were kept. And that's the family of King David. So in the Old Testament, Christ was supposed to be born in the family of David. And that's exactly what happened. So the genealogy of Jesus Christ starts from the Old Testament but when he's born from the Virgin Mary the lineage is from the family of David. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's read the book of John chapter 1 verse 41. 
Yohana igice cya 41 That's the same verse I read. I want us to read it again. Mm. He first found his own brothers and said to him, "We have found the Messiah, which is translated as Christ." Abanza kubona mwene se Simoni aramubwira ati, "Twabonye Messiah risobanurwa ngo Kristo." Now, as we talk about this Messiah called Jesus Christ. Tuvuga kuri uyu Messiah kandi witwa Kristo. I want us to have the same understanding on the three things. Whenever in the Old Testament, whenever a person would be raised up, he would be anointed. And there are three categories of people that would be anointed. The first person to be anointed was a prophet. Every prophet in the Old Testament was anointed. And this prophet would speak on behalf of God. And when you read the Old Testament, prophets say, as God says. Because they were having a message from God. So mark this, every prophet would be anointed because they would prophesy to the nations even prophesy to the kings. So that position or that office or that responsibility whoever would occupy that office would be anointed with the oil and so whenever you would see a prophet from a distance people would bow down because the anointed person is on the way coming. Even the readers in the region would see a prophet and say, here comes the anointed prophet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then there's another office that was anointed in the Old Testament. And this is a person we call a priest. In the Old Testament, a priest would be somebody who communicates to people a message from God but not a prophecy. In other words, he was a person between man and God. Whenever people have some issues, a priest would help them to connect it to God. Many times they would be anointed before becoming priests. So these priests were considered mediators between man and God. You remember in the Old Testament there was a place called the Holy of Holies. Whenever people would bring sacrifices, it was only a priest that was supposed to go there. And this time, a chief priest would go there. Because a priest was anointed to do that. A priest was supposed to be a mediator between the father and a person. So the first person to be ordained or anointed was a prophet. Every prophet in the old times was anointed. And then number two, a priest would be anointed. Then number three, number three, every king would be anointed. King David was anointed. Every king in the Old Testament was anointed. And we are going to focus on these three roles in detail and then we see how Jesus comes in and where you come in. When Jesus was prophesied that he's going to come, 
He was going to come to be a Messiah. Yagombaga kuza kugira ngo ahinduke Mesiya. And then his coming would make him occupy those three positions. Hanyuma kuza kwe kwa kwagombaga gutuma ajya muri za nshingano eshatu. So when Jesus first arrived, igihe Yesu yazaga bwa mbere, as a baby born from the small family, n'umwana muto waruvukiye mu muryango uciriritse. Some kings were scared because another king was being born. Abami bamwe bate ubwo banuko ndi mwamavutse. And some people were whispering, maybe he could be a priest. Abandi bongorera nababwe then other people would say maybe he's the prophet we've been waiting for and then what they thought came true when Jesus was born he became a prophet let's read in the first John chapter 1 verse 1 it's a verse you all know in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God because when Jesus was born he was born as the word you know a prophecy is the word of God so when Jesus is born and when he became an adult it was clearly known that this man is the son of God and then he is also God himself so number one he became a prophet a prophet was a message a prophet is a message and because God was born in the name of Jesus Jesus became a prophet and he became a word himself then number two Jesus became a priest in 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5 First Timothy chapter 2 verse 5 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5 the Bible says for there is one God and one mediator remember a, a priest is a mediator kuko hariho imana imwe kandi hariho umuhuza umwe w'imana n'abantu wibuke ko Kristo ari umuhuza and the man is Christ Jesus let's read again for there is one God and one mediator before there were so many mediators because there were so many priests but now there is only one mediator who can mediate you and God and his name is Christ then Hebrews chapter 2 verse 17 therefore he had to be made like the brothers in every respect so that he might become a merciful and a faithful high priest Hebrews chapter 2 verse 17 therefore he had to be made like his brothers in every respect so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God so you see Jesus here in Hebrews is referred to as a priest or as a mediator between man and God because before priests wherever they could be they would mediate people and God and whenever you would be having a family issue you would go seek counsel from a priest and you would not just go just empty hands so you would go with something and whenever you appear before a priest a priest would plead on your behalf he would accept your sacrifice and then mediate you and God so when Jesus is born and is officially on the planet 
all other priests' roar ended. Because there was no any more mediator between God and man except Jesus himself. Responsibility number three. Jesus became a king. You remember when Jesus was born? King Herod was scared. He even wanted to kill baby Jesus. Because he had heard that another king is born. But when you read the book of Isaiah chapter number 9 verse 6. The Bible says to us a child is born. To us a child is given. And his government will be on his shoulders. You know, and only kings would be in charge of governments. So Jesus becomes a king. And the Bible says, and the government shall be on his shoulders. And then when you read in the book of Revelations, the Bible says, verse 15, Chapter 11, verse 15. Uh, I'm going to read it slowly because this is Revelations. Chapter number 11, verse 15. Then the seventh angel blew his trumpet, mm. and there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and Savior. Christ mm. and he shall reign forever. Maraika wakaringwi avuzimanda mwijuru havuga amajwi arenga ngo ubwami bw'isi bubaye ubwami bwacu bubaye bubaye ubw'umwami wacu nubwo nubwa Kristo kandi azahora ku ngoma iteka ryose. So you see Jesus Christ yes, as so the Christo, king nk'umwami whenever there would be a king in the Old Testament. Their governments would be for a short time. Now those kings would rule for only 10 years. Maybe 25 years. But there's a new king who came in. He's called Jesus Christ. The Bible says his government shall stay. In other words, Jesus Christ is going to rule forever and ever. Now, as we talk about Jesus Christ, today we are in the era of Jesus Christ. And the reason why we should understand everything about Jesus Christ is because we, we, when we have full information about him, then our Christianity will have value. We have seen three levels and we have seen three responsibilities which people occupied in the Old Testament. Now we know that our Messiah who happens to be Jesus Christ the anointed priest the anointed prophet and the anointed king he's the one who in charge hallelujah. hallelujah your uncle cannot do anything but Jesus is in charge. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now where this is very important it's because nuko Something I'm going to tell you will help you grow. The same offices that are residing in Jesus Christ are also in you. You don't understand. Jesus Christ is a prophet. The anointed prophet. Jesus Christ is the chief priest. A mediator between you and God. And then Jesus Christ 
is the king of kings. In other words, you belong to his government. Now, where is this very important to you? Hallelujah. If you have Christ in you, then you have a kingdom you have priesthood and you are a prophet. Now that's the privilege we have today. People in the Old Testament, even the Isaiah, you know, all those prophets didn't have that opportunity. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, the Bible says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives where? In me. You see the reason why Christians are beggars. It's, not, it's because they don't know who they are. I was crucified with Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives where? Now, if Christ is a priest, is a chief priest, and Christ is a chief prophet, and Christ is the king. Why, why do you go seek counsel from prophets? When you have everything within you. You know, there are certain messages that don't help people. When you are exposing the truth in the Bible. People are expecting something else. But if you don't understand who Christ is in you, you will never move from one step to another. That is why Christians are the most confused people, I'm telling you. Majority. When you ask questions, they have no answers because they don't read they don't understand the scriptures so apostle Paul was saying I was crucified it is not I who is living but Christ who is living in me when Christ is living in you he is not dead in you Christ has never died Christ is living in you. Yes, you are poor, but Christ is living in you. You don't have a job, but Christ is living in you. Your family has no food, but Christ is in you. Because he's alive. He's alive in you. So it is you to activate his workings in you. Because he's not dead. He's a king. And the Bible refers to him as the king of kings. The reason why he's referred to as the king of kings is because before him there were those kings. Even after him there are other kings. But all those kings submitted to one king. Who is alive and kicking in you? There are those kings prophets. But there is a chief prophet. And the difference between the prophets of the Old Testament and Jesus Christ. Prophets in the Old Testament they would say Thy says the Lord. But the chief prophet he says I'm telling you this truly, truly, I tell you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because for him, he is getting from the source and he is the source. 
kuko we afukura ku mugezi kandi niwe mugezi hallelujah hallelujah thy says the lord Imana yavuze Isaiah would say thy says the lord Yesaya ravuga ngo Imana yavuze Jeremiah would say thy says the lord Yeremia kavuga ngo Imana yavuze but Jesus Ariko Yesu he says truly i tell you when you speak to the mountain the mountain shall be removed i tell you if you believe in me greater miracles shall you do also because he is the main prophet hallelujah and that prophet is not living far away from you he is not even your neighbor he does not sleep with you he is in you hallelujah you may be despised but you are carrying a king of kings you may be rejected in your home. But the chief prophet is inside of you. I was crucified with him. It is not I who live any longer. But Christ that lives in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we go deeper into the scriptures, we will really understand that whatever Jesus touches is what you touch whatever he declares is what you declare hallelujah because it is not you who is living but Christ in you hallelujah I wish you understand this I have been crucified with Christ it is no longer I who live but Christ who lives in me and the life I now live in the flesh I live it by faith in the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me and that's the king of kings I want to tell you this. There is a great confusion among the body of Christ. And, and, the, and the genesis of this is because we have been addicted to other gospel. Because if you understand Jesus Christ and you understand God the Father and you understand the Holy Spirit even if you close your ears to another information that's enough hallelujah let's rise on our feet pastor come forward hallelujah hallelujah so the Old Testament is believed in the Messiah to come. Even those kings, including King David, they had that anticipation that the king would be born. And whenever they would hear a child born somewhere, they would say, maybe he's the one. And then time came in another generation which we are in Jesus is born from a small family that was not known and then lo and behold he became the king of kings and the lord of lords and then he became a prophet who tells you exactly a message God has for you and then he became a mediator between you and God there's something I have to mention before we end the reason why God sent Jesus Christ here on earth God wanted Jesus to experience what you experience. 
Jesus was rejected. Yesu yaranzwe. God the Father knew how rejection is. Imana data yari suku ni cyangiro cyangwa kwangwa bimera. But he had never experienced it. Ariko ntago yari yarahuye nabyo. So he had to send his son. Yagombaga kohereza umwana wa experience what people experience. Ahure nibyo abantu bahura nabyo. He was hated by people he loved. Yanzwe nabana kunda. God is hated by so many people. Imana yanzwe nabantu benshi. But it was Jesus who came here. Ariko ni Yesu Kristo waje to experience hatred. Kugira ngo ahure n'icyangiro cyangwa no kwangwa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So because Jesus Kubera Yesu went through what we go through. Yaciye mu byo tunyuramo. He became our mediator. When something is happening to you, he says, Father, I know what is going through because I've been there. Please help him. Jesus' work on the cross was for us to be connected to the Father. But most importantly, for us to experience the love of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ goes between you and God. When you are about to die, Jesus says, Father, Data. Not for him today, today. Because he still has a lot of work to do here. I know what he's experiencing right now. Because I've been there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is your mediator between you and God. If Jesus had not died for you, I'm telling you, you will not be here now. And then Jesus, yes, he experienced kingdoms here on earth. He understands how kings are rejected. So Jesus Christ, yes, Christ is now the king of kings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The reason why today we have freedom in many parts of the world it's because Jesus experienced life here otherwise the rapture would have happened a long time ago but Jesus delays it Jesus delays it so that you and me may get to know the truth so that this same truth sets us free to connect with him. Over to you, Pastor. Pastor Rosa, I'll pass.